We're going to take you inside a radical underground. As America marks the one-year anniversary of the Boston Marathon bombings, homegrown terror is, of course, top of mind. Nightline gained unprecedented access to a movement of young Muslim fundamentalists who want to impose Sharia law on the West and also to the right-wing, mostly white group that has risen up in reaction and essentially declared war. Here's ABC's Lama Hassan. I just heard that. They just said racist. Walking down the street with Tommy Robinson is dangerous business. See? What's he saying now? F you. He is the founder of what many consider to be Britain's biggest hate group. His name has become a symbol for anti-Muslim hatred. What the f*** you put in your camera? And in this neighborhood, that makes Robinson a marked man. Robinson calls himself a soldier. Oh, God. No, 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 no. Oh and this is his war. Oh, God. America's going to see firsthand what's going to happen. This is what's happening. This is coming your way. USA, watch your back. USA, watch your back. The Muslims are coming back. On one side, British-born radical Muslims. We don't worship Obama. We don't follow presidents or prime ministers. We only follow Allah. Who believe they're fighting a holy war against the West. Allahu Akbar. And want Sharia law to rule the world. The last hour will never come until a group of Muslims rise and conquer the White House. There is no such thing in this country as a Muslim area. On the other, the far-right movement Robinson founded. He's our leader, and our one and only leader, Mr. Tommy Robinson. The English Defence League says their mission is to fight radical Islam. Everyone says, what can we do? It's too late. It is never, ever too late. But the EDL became synonymous with racism and Islamophobia. Its members connected to hate crimes and mosque bombings. It was tempting to brush the EDL aside as racist thugs set on promoting fear. But so many ordinary citizens were responding to their message. I had to find out why, not only as a journalist, but as a Muslim woman myself. I've spent nearly all my life here in London. For years, well, I've reported from both the Middle East and here at home. Of course, this is a very happy moment for both William and Kate. But as I was about to find out, this is the assignment where those worlds collide. Oi, f I'll stab your mum. These are all death threats that people have tweeted you. My journey began in northwest London. It's just constant threats daily, man. And where I met the leader of the infamous EDL. Oi, you white c who the hell are you saying stuff about Muslims? If I saw you on the street, I'd make you bleed, you racist Robinson f wanted to show me what he calls the Muslim area of his hometown. It's more like an Islamic ghetto, where Muslims move in and English people move out. Yeah. Well, so, oh, there's plenty to discuss. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. This is my town. This is where I'm born. There's not one English person there, there's no English shops, non-Muslims just don't go, everyone avoids it. This isn't a Muslim shop, it's a bicycle shop. So it's not all Islamic shops. I have to say, look, everything that I dread has made me quite frightened of your group, actually. If you listen to what we're saying, we don't want all Muslims to leave. I don't want all Muslims to leave, I don't hate all Muslims. But he does admit there are yeah. racists in yeah, his group who do. Let's put it into a perspective here. So we've got 2,000 minimum Islamist te terrorists that are in this country that wish to inflict murder and war on this country. Now, my biggest fear is that in 20, 30 years, that'll be 20,000. That's a small army. I have a duty as a father and a duty as an Englishman to do anything we can that prevents that. What was the tipping point for you? And Lee Rigby got killed. This is an attack that has genuinely shocked the world. A British soldier attacked and beheaded on the streets of London. By the soldier who was stabbed to death, Lee Rigby. By two knife-wielding Muslim converts. The two killers describe themselves as soldiers of Allah. This horrific attack took place right here behind me. As I reported on this hideous crime, all I could think was, not again. 
A few homegrown radicals using my religion as an excuse for unspeakable acts. The blowback was immediate. Enough's enough. At the center of it, Tommy Robinson and the EDL, whose membership skyrocketed. This issue is political Islam. It's political Islam that's spreading across this country. As much as I disagree with the tactics of the EDL, I understand Tommy Robinson's anger. Because like most Muslims, I condemn any violence committed in the name of Allah. Yes to Islam! Yes to Islam! Yes to Sharia! Yes to Sharia! But there are extremists among us, and I tracked them down at a rally in East London. Very nice to meet you. Nothing against you, but we don't shake hands with men and women yes. in this land. This is Anjum Chowdhury, founder of a radical Muslim group that was banned under Britain's Terrorist Act. In this video, you can see one of Lee Rigby's killers just over his shoulder. Do you condone killing sentence. Lee Rigby? As, as an objective media spokesperson, you've got to look at the wider picture. You just look at Lee Rigby and you have your minute silence. If you're going to have a minute silence for every Muslim who's killed, you will never speak again. That's the reality. Where's, this, where's your silence for the Muslims? Terrorists go! Off our streets! Suddenly, I found myself caught between Chowdhury's group and far-right counter-protesters. Not me, Move back. Move back. Move back. Move back. All of a sudden it's kicked off. We've got, I don't know where these guys come from. It's really getting out of hand. God knows what's going to happen. Can you please move on to the pavement? This person just over there, Anjum Chowdhury, he's being allowed to walk around our streets. This is an absolute disgrace. Rallies are only one way Chowdhury's followers promote Sharia. Several in his network have been imprisoned for their activities on so-called Sharia patrols. Islam is here in London. These cell phone videos show young Muslim men filming themselves confronting non-Muslims in the streets of London. Remove yourself away from the mosque. Commanding them to obey Islamic laws. Why are you bothering me? I'm not, I'm not. Because you, you're walking through a Muslim area dressed like a fag, mate. Harassing people they believe to be gay. You're dirty, mate. And women they consider dressed immodestly. I'm so We don't care if you're appalled at all. It's Great Britain. This we don't Women care. It's not so Great Britain. Vigilantes implementing Islam upon your own necks. We are here to call for a complete and utter regime change in Britain. Abu Rumaysa is one of Chowdhury's protégés, a British-born Muslim convert who frequently leads Sharia patrols in East London. Do you do that kind of thing? Is that what you do in your Sharia patrols? Um, I, well, we haven't done that particular uh, patrol, but I'm not going to condemn that. I think it's uh, normal. You're not? I'm not going to condemn Muslims. But it's none of your business, though. Of course it's my business. As a Muslim, I'm living in this society, and means, if I see something wrong happening, means, I need to forbid it. He agreed to let me come along on a patrol. I had no idea what to expect. So here we are on the streets of Whitechapel, Friday night. What is it <laughs> that you're hoping to achieve tonight? This is uh, one of many nights which we, we come out and we engage with the community, tell them about Islam. Obviously, this is all part and parcel of the campaign to bring Sharia to the UK. How far are you willing to go to get Sharia law across the world? Would you use violent means, for example? You never know in the future what lies ahead. OK, but you're not answering my question. To what extent would you go to to get what you want? The jihad is not uh, you know, uh, a bad thing. It is a noble, a noble aim. When the Sharia is established, I think that will be the beginning of the end of the United States of America, of Britain, of Europe and the you know, in, entire world, which is currently being governed by man-made law. Meanwhile, other members of the patrol were busy taking down ads for escort services. I want to actually ring these people and tell them what they're doing is completely unacceptable. We are the Muslims in Whitechapel and we do not wish to have your business in this area. In fact, female modesty was quite a sore spot. Do you think I should be covered up? I believe every single woman should be covered up, yes. Are you kidding me? No. How can you say that? I'm, I'm offended. Um, I think I'm dressed modestly, that's the thing. Yeah, but you don't, are you Muslim? Yes. Okay. I'm surprised because, I mean, the questions you're, you've been asking me, they seem quite aggressive, very anti-Islam, anti-Sharia. You do realise I'm a journalist, so it is my job to ask No, you're a Muslim. All, all the... the thing is, look, we shouldn't identify ourselves by our profession. We're Muslim first, Muslim second, Muslim last. I was stunned at what I was hearing that night. We were in London, just a few miles from Buckingham Palace. Just uh, trying to remind everyone to keep hold of the identity of being Muslim. But even more disturbing was the effect they seemed to have on the youth in the streets. That we're Muslim first, Muslim second, Muslim last, and uh, not, not British. The 
Patrol was urging them to give up any sense of loyalty to their country. What, you need one ideology? What's that? Is it Islam? They become Muslims. Even found a young man who was willing to convert on the spot. That I believe. That I believe. That nothing. That nothing has the right. That has the right to be worshipped. To be worshipped. Except Allah. Except Allah. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah. Feels good to do what I've just done. Really, converting myself, be a part of something. You are now Muslim.